A few years ago, my wife and I sat down and made a family sustainability plan with the idea that if we were smart about it, we could help the planet by reducing our emissions and save a ton of money. So in almost three years, we've accomplished just about everything on that list. And that has led us to be able to pay less than $1 per day for electricity for almost those entire three years. So let's dive in and I'll show you what I did to save money here and the planet and see if it might work out for you. Our strategy is actually pretty simple and it has mostly two parts. Let's start with part one, going solar. Solar is something that isn't right for everyone, but is right for a lot of people. And now, thankfully, Google has this really awesome tool to help you see exactly whether or not solar is gonna be right for you. So on Google Project Sunroof, it's a really cool tool where you can punch in your address and see whether or not solar is right for you. In this case, I just wanna explore some areas. So I'm gonna to go to the Data Explorer and have a look at Seattle, a place that you may not think is one that's right for solar energy. And looking at the results here, you you can see that, yeah, the sunlight on the rooftops aren't great, but 85% of buildings are solar viable, meaning that the way that the roofs are structured and everything else would do well to add solar energy. When you go down, you can see the roof space, the number of roofs, all this kind of stuff, the types of roofs, the installs, all that kind of stuff, and see exactly what the potential is for this market. So let's go over now to an area that does work extremely well where I live in Southern California. And here you can see just the bright yellow compared to the darker, shadier colors that we saw in Seattle, which just gives you an idea of how good an area is for solar. Now, again, you can punch in your exact address here and get more details, but I actually have a better tool for that that's a bit more actionable. And this is the one that I used to go solar about three years ago. And this tool is from Energy Sage, and it's a solar calculator, like many of them out there. This is the actual one I use, though, so I wanted to show this because I think it's one of the best ones out there. You punch in your address, like I've done here, and you drag the map, the little dot here, over your actual roof to see exactly whether or not it's right for you. Then you punch in your electricity bill. Mine at the time was right here, around $150 and it runs the numbers for you. It looks at the roof size, orientation, rates, incentives, all kinds of stuff, and seeing exactly what's going on with solar in your area. Then it gives you the results. And the big deal here is it shows you the results, how much money you're gonna save over the life of a solar installation. So as you scroll down, you can see that there are three different options it presents paying in cash, doing a $0 down loan, or a $0 down lease. And this is an interesting way that a lot of people are being able to get solar without having to come out of pocket. Then as you scroll down, you can kind of see how that works with in terms of the payback period, and then property value increasing, et cetera, et cetera. So Looking on Energy Sage, you can really quickly just get a sense of the value that solar may bring to your specific address and all the different kind of financing options. Now, let me address one thing that may have popped out there is that this is a long-term investment. This isn't something that you're looking to save money on your electricity bill tomorrow, but it can be something that will start to pay back much sooner depending on where you live and your energy needs. So to get the actual real detailed information, you can do what I did, which is to sign up at Energy Sage, give them your electricity bill and do the map thing and show them your roof line. And then you get bids from installers without sharing your personal information with them, meaning they're not gonna spam you. This is literally what I did to get solar. So go check them out. I have become an affiliate for them, but there's no added cost to you and it does help kind of grow the channel and everything. So I'll put a link in the description down below if you wanna check out Energy Sage and take it to the next step. Prior to getting solar installed at my house, I was paying $157 a month in electricity, which included me working from home full-time, my wife and one-year-old, which were also home full-time, and our one electric car that we had recently purchased. Immediately following our install of solar, our bill dropped dramatically, averaging $15 a month for the next 12 months, which includes these non-bypassable charges, which are right around 10 to $12 a month. I know, I know, they want you to pay just to be connected, even if you're not taking any energy out, but hey, there are a lot of things that I pay more than 10 bucks a month for that are far less important than having reliable electricity. 
So I'm okay with it. Then we got another electric car, a Tesla Model 3, and I was charging outside of home, so nothing really shifted much. But once I moved back home from my studio in December of 2018, our bill shot up dramatically again. At that time, I dug in and found that I could switch my electricity plan to where I got charged different rates at different times a day, and then control when I charged my cars to kind of wash that out and save more money. So I did that and the price started to drop again and our bill started to normalize. So while this wasn't a part of our strategy initially, it turned out to be a super valuable piece. This whole time of use rates or TOU plans as you may see them called, you can use it to your advantage if you can control when you consume your energy versus when you send it back to the grid. And the way it works is that at certain times of day, you'll get charged a higher price than others. And if you can then be selling energy back to the grid at that time, you will be essentially making more money and then go back and refill that at a later time when the prices are lower. And this is where our second major part of our strategy came into play. These are our Tesla Powerwalls. With our Tesla Powerwall being installed in August of 2019, we were able to once again, start charging both of our EVs at home and save even more with what's known as peak shaving. The idea here is what I kind of mentioned earlier where we have a power wall and it allows us to configure when we are going to pull energy from the grid versus our own batteries. So with this, what we do is we charge our cars from 12 to 6 a.m. at a super low rate, nine cents per kilowatt hour. Then we kick on and solar energy pulls up and we start living off of our solar energy for most of the day. Then when the rates get super high at 4 p.m., we flip over to running all of our energy needs off of the power wall. This way, any excess solar energy is being sold back to the grid. So we're buying energy at nine cents a kilowatt hour and selling it back to the grid at 53 cents a kilowatt hour. Buy low, sell high, simple. Right? This also works because in California, like 37 other states and territories in the US, we have what's called net energy metering or NEM. This is where as an energy producer, I am able to sell energy back to the grid and get credited for that. And the way it works specifically is I am credited at the same rate of which energy would cost during that time. So when I switch my house to running on my power wall at that peak rate of 53 cents a kilowatt hour, and then all of my solar energy, which is still being generated, goes back to the grid, I'm being credited at that 53 cents a kilowatt hour during that time. Then when the prices drop to nine cents a kilowatt hour from that 12 a.m. to 6 a.m., what they call super off peak, I fill up my cars and if need be, I fill up the power walls. Now this might sound a bit fishy, like it's not gonna work, but the deal is this really helps the grid by essentially taking my house offline during the toughest time when it has that peak demand. So the energy companies have no issues with this and the states and everyone else have regulated it. So that way I'm getting a fair deal by doing this and it does help the long-term strategy of maintaining the grid. And what I do is I actually kind of take it a step further by mostly filling up the power walls from solar. So that nine cents a kilowatt hour rate really is just reserved for charging my electric cars, which with 80 kilowatt hours in one and 90 kilowatt hours in another is an absolute ton of energy. Thankfully, we're not driving a ton right now, but those would absolutely destroy the power walls in terms of just eating up all the energy there and going back to the grid anyways, leaving them completely depleted for the following day. So to take it a step further, the way I have it set up is I do that peak shaving technique where my house is essentially off grid from four to 9 p.m. when it's that highest rate, then, I go back to the grid when it's the lowest rate of nine cents kilowatt hour from 12 to 6 a.m. is when I pull the most energy. And then other than that, I'm living on solar and feeding as much back to the grid as possible. Any excess that is from, you know, the energy being used during the day with my wife and two kids home and me here in our home studio working. So if you add it all up, over the past 12 months, I've paid an average of 86 cents per day for electricity. And since the power walls, that average has dropped to 60 cents per day. Now remember, that isn't just the energy being used in the home for air conditioning and TV and whatever else, that includes two electric vehicles. So that means all of our essentially gas money that we would be spending as well is included in this rate of 60 cents per day since we got our power walls installed. Now, of course, there is a cost associated with getting solar and power walls and setting up all of this stuff, but 
I'll save that for a future video when I have kind of more data and I can give you a more complete picture. But right now, if you do wanna go a little bit further, check out this video over here where I talk about my Powerwall install, how it went and the cost and everything that I went through to get these two Powerwalls installed at my house. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below. And don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you back here in the next one.